Throughout all my years of cycling, I've never really had any dramas when it comes to shoes, cleats, knee tracking, or anything I needed to sort out where I connect my two legs to my bike. That being said, I'm not one to shy away from potentially introducing new issues by trying new things. So today, speed play. Now I've always ridden Shimano or look style pedals on my road bikes or Shimano SPDs on any mountain or gravel bike that I've ridden. I've never once clipped in or out of a Speedplay pedal. In late September 2019, Wahoo acquired the Speedplay brand and since then we've all been waiting to see what they do with it. Wahoo are well known for their simple and straightforward approach to that end user experience. If you've used an Element, a Roam or a Bolt or the new Arrival Multisport watch, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. If you've used Speedplay, well that's almost the opposite. It's anything but simple to set up. I mean, really, check out this documentation here. We have a little documentation here. We have uh, more documentation here. And this one here that talks about connecting cleats to shoes. This is not a simple process to follow. I was never good at folding maps either. So in anticipation of Wahoo doing something with the Speedplay brand, be that a new pedal, a new cleat system, or sorting out that horrible mess, I wanna be one step ahead of the game. I wanna have a set of shoes set up with the Speedplay cleat system, and I wanna be familiar with clipping in and clipping out. So first up, I'll need a set of shoes. For that, I have a set of Bont Helix to set up with this Speedplay system. Now, my history with Bont is quite interesting. It goes back 12 years. I think it's the last time I had a set of Bonts and they didn't really work out for me. The heel area was just too tight, just weren't my thing. These shoes have been baked to perfection in the Llama oven and they feel pretty comfortable on. So we'll see how they go when we set them up for the Speedplay system. Now I'm size 44.5 in these Bont Helix. I'm 43 in Specialized, I'm 44 in Velo Kicks and 44 in Lake, just as a reference for different shoe sizes. So that's the shoes taken care of, over to the cleats and the pedal system. So I've picked up a set of these funky zero arrows, but they don't give the full speed play double-sided clip-in system. So I'll put those aside. I've picked up a second set, second hand, nice and cheap. Um, just a set of pre-owned zeros. You can stomp in, or do you call it clip-in? I'm not even familiar with the terminology for speed play on both sides. So these will be going on first. I'll see how I go, and then I'll switch over to these later on. The cleat system, as you saw with that documentation, we have a bolt kit. We have a plate, we have a, a converter to three to four hole. We have this thing here that goes on left and right and has some float adjustment, which I'll look into. And we finally have this to clip on over top. So that's what I'm gonna dig into today. I'm no expert on this. I have read the documentation. Let's get stuck into it. First things first, let's get these things on the weight scale. The left shoe coming in at 259 grams, the right shoe coming in at 254. So for the 44.5 Bont Helix, they come in at 513. Onto the Speedplay Zero Arrows with the 53 mil spindle, those weigh in at 213 grams. The pre-owned Zeros that I have come in at 221 grams. Now that's not the full picture with Speedplay pedals because the cleat weighs a little more than other systems. So we won't need that protection plate. We will need the shim, the cleat and the walkable cover and also more bolts than you can poke a stick at. So three and four required coming in at 71 grams for the walkable cleat. Now to line up the conversion plate or the adapter plate from three hole to four hole, my center line is about there and the shim slash adapter has a center line on it, but I can't really see where to place it. I kind of have to take a best guess at looking down below or underneath where it's going to slide in there. But if that was transparent, it'd be much easier, but away we go. and. Here's where I need another three or four arms. Definitely a job for an octopus. I encountered a bit of an issue because the insert actually fell out of the shoe. So I needed to do a bit of uh, gymnastics with my fingers to get that back in place. And away we go. Correctly pressing down. I've never had that happen before on a shoe. But correctly pressing down on the plate inside the shoe before screwing things in. And the three screws 
are now in. Yes, it's a bit of a process. Okay, now, the idea is to have that dead flat. And you can see there, that's all looking pretty good. So the supplied shims match the bont perfectly. All flat and ready to go for the cleat. So, onto the cleat. Four bolts for that. And this should be done with a torque wrench, but I'm not going to go and purchase another tool just for cleats. So I'm just doing this by hand for the moment, which should be good enough. And onto the float adjustment on the side there. I'm having a rough guess at where that should be before we clip in and really test it out. And back in with the very thin insole that ships with these shoes. Okay. All looks relatively secure. Rinse and repeat for the other side, exactly the same process. And they all look good to go. Okay, what you're seeing here is my very first attempt at clipping into a speed play pedal. And that worked perfectly the first time. The second and the third. Happy days. Fourth, kind of didn't quite get there. And this is what I've been struggling with lately. It's hard to explain exactly what it's like. It's kind of like this. You just sort of, sort of feel around and it, it will eventually go in. There we go, just like that. Now, I was finding the disengagement a little too light, clipping out of these. So, off with the walkable cover, which is quite securely held on. It eventually came off. And then it was on to the adjustment of the float. So, I was going to screw those right down. I do run zero float, or very close to zero float, with my other pedals. So I thought I'd jam these down and see if this changes the experience with these pre-owned speed plays. And I have a suspicion the pedal bodies on the pre-owned ones I've picked up are a little bit worn. Hmm. So once that was adjusted, it was onto the open roads on the road bike with these pre-owned speed play zeros and the new Bont shoes. Now the one thing that was obvious with these Speedplay Zeros, the pre-owned versions, was the lateral or side-to-side -side movement. You can see there on the right side and definitely on the left side. My other pedal systems do not have that much movement side-to-side. -side. That wasn't moving my heel, that was just a side-to-side -side movement which was a little concerning. So after a few sprints and a few out-of-the-saddle efforts, it wasn't too bad. But I could feel that movement and it was just getting to me a little bit. The shoes themselves, super stiff, probably a little bit too stiff. So rolled in the final 20 kilometers here. It was a beautiful day out. And the first thing I did was replace those insoles with these specialized uh, body geometry footbeds, I think they call them. These are the medium range ones or the mid-sized ones with more arch support. And I can tell you now, it was a world of difference putting these insoles in. They completely changed the shoes. And with three quick taps, I was no longer in Kansas, I was in comfortable shoes again. So much better with these new footbeds. And I also switched out the pre-owned speed play pedals to the new Aero Zeros. And you can see here, there's a lot less lateral movement. So they lock in a lot better. And I was a lot more confident with these out on the road, both in the saddle and out of the saddle. Okay, here we are a few days and a few hundred kilometers later after switching over to speed play pedals for the first time. 
And I've got to be honest, I think these pre-owned Speedplay Zeros I picked up are absolute junk. Because the new ones that I put on were fantastic. These had way too much float side to side, they were too easy to clip out of. Two things that the new pedals that I put on did not have. So anybody who's experienced with Speedplay, please let me know in the comments below. Do the pedal bodies wear out over time? And what kind of life expectancy do we get out of the Speedplay pedal bodies? Now I've got a new set of dual sided pedals on their way and hopefully they're just as good as the single sided aero ones that I quite like. Now it wasn't just the pedals that I switched over, it was also the shoes and you saw there that I switched out these for the insoles that I have on there. The support for these was way too high on the arch, it felt like it pushed up right at the top there even after heat molding but putting in those more supportive the blue insoles that i use from specialized it also put the support through here and it was an absolute world of difference i do like some comfort in my shoes these things were anything but but that's their job to be super stiff but my preference is a little bit more comfort on the insoles which leads me to another discussion point and it's all about the supplied insoles of expensive cycling shoes now this is not just bont this is every cycling shoe that i've ever purchased and it's all about well, these junk insoles that come with them, they're absolutely horrible. I'll always go out and spend the additional money on something that supports my foot a little better. Now, when buying expensive cycling shoes, you get to choose the make, the model, the color, and the size, then you're shipped cardboard. Absolutely horrible. I go out and spend a little bit more money, put some insoles in there, and change the experience entirely. For what we pay for these shoes, compare that to your running shoes. These are twice or three times the price of your high-end running shoes they could at least offer us say three or four options for arch support. I think that's a value add they should all consider. Even if it costs us 20, 30, $40 on top of the shoes, most of us are spending that additionally anyway. So have it as part of the service offering, we'd all be a little happier. These, look, I reckon I could put these up against some craft singles and the cheese would win every time. Something I should test in the Llama Lab. Okay, so that's my experience with the Speedplay pedals and these Bont shoes. Specifically on the Speedplay pedals, I think they would be a bike fitter's dream, and I believe they are. You can get different spindle lengths, you can change the float on the fly and really customize those things. And if you can get your bike fitter to set up those cleats, even better. You don't have to muck around with that entire process. And yes, it is a process compared to the three bolt, just whack them on and ride solution for Shimano and other pedals. Now that I'm a little more familiar with the Speedplay setup and use, I'm really interested to see what Wahoo can do with it. Will they focus on the pedal, maybe a redesign, or can they fix out that entire process that's happening on the bottom of the shoe? Very keen to see what they come up with. Now, if you're a Speedplay user, here's where you get to contribute and help me out. Let me know in the comments below. Do you love Speedplay? Have you used them for years and years? Do you hate Speedplay? Have you used them in the past and moved to something else? I'm really keen to hear your experience. And while you're at it, tell me about the maintenance. Now I know I have to grease these every now and then, and I've got to oil the cleats as well. How often do I need to do that? Do I need to do it next week or next year? I'm keen to hear the tools that I need as well. So please let me know below in the comments. And with that, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.